to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. Today on the show, I have Kat Anderson of Material Design, an interior design business that specializes in design-build projects. In business five years, Kat is also one of the teachers at Luann University, which officially launched two weeks ago at Luann Live. And Kat is one of my chairman of the board clients. In fact, we've just started our second year together. This is one particularly outstanding lady. You'll hear her share about how she's grown her skill and career through years of hard work and dedication to improvement and a fascination with spreadsheets. We do not share this love, Kat and I. (laughs) I do admire it in her, though. (laughs) It's like Vita. I attract all these people to me that have that whole skill set. I think I just love to see how their brain works. Anyway... In 2020, she did teach one of the Luann University classes, Online Bookkeeping 101, which we are offering again this spring, and Kat is teaching it. And she's also teaching a new class, Design Build 201, which is the continuation of Jenny Slingerland's Design Build 101, which is also on the curriculum for this March, too. So you can learn all about all of the classes that are offered at luannuniversity.com. Early bird registration is open now. All right, so let's get to it. Let's hear how this young lady out of design school learned to be a design build pro and to gain enough mastery in her processes that she's able to teach designers everywhere how to handle their online bookkeeping and how to excel at design build projects. Hi, Kat. Thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Hi, Luann. It's so great to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to have you, Kat, because today we are going to talk about a couple of things that I've come to learn are true superpowers of yours. Uh, You are one of my chairman of the board clients, and we're into our second year of uh, me being your chairman of the board. And so I'm... You know what's so cool about that for me is I love really getting to know... um, a business owner at that deep level, and you in particular, I have come to really admire the things that you are so good at. You're not just, you know, ordinary good at it. You're extra good at it. And what's interesting is the things you're really good at are truly opposite the things I'm good at. (laughs) So I think we're a good fit. (laughs) It's why we're such a good team. (laughs) I love having you on my chairman of the board. (laughs) Right? And so the things that you're really, really good at, and I've learned over the last 13, 14 months of working together, is that you are, I would use the word, a master at managing your finances. Uh, I I know that I have never asked you a single question during any of our sessions where I said, so Kat, you know, what percentage of business last year result, you know, came as a result of working with that particular builder or, you know, how much did you earn on the two projects with this builder as opposed to that builder? And every time you're like, oh, hang on, let me just like look that up. (laughs) And you're like, go right to it. And you tell me, and I just marvel at the way you're so adept at understanding your finances, but knowing how to manage them and how to evaluate them and how to use them to make decisions. And um, tell me, because I know the story, but share with us your journey in understanding online accounting and why you are so good at it. Thank you so much, Luann. That means a lot coming from you. And I have grown to rely on you for so much guidance over this (laughs) last year that you've been my chairman of the board, but also for the years before that, listening to the podcast. Mm. And I really, really want to start out by saying thank you from the industry for all that you've done for all of us. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. So Luann, when I first 
came out of design school, I worked for a builder that was doing spec houses and I was their on staff designer. Um, but through the recession, the design work kind of went away. The spec houses kind of went away and the builder was doing more industrial type building. A lot of the colleagues that I went to school with were working at Starbucks or dress shops or whatever, and everybody was kind of doing what they could to survive. And I was super, super young in the industry, we're living in a smaller town with not that big of a <clears throat> market. And so I ended up just kind of doing anything that the builder needed me to do. And so I got to know the job sites really, really well. I got to do a little bit of project management um, and honestly, just to kind of fill my time and their needs, I also started working in the office and I was the only one kind of managing the back of the office for this builder. So I learned job costing and um, QuickBooks and I was going to meetings with accountants and honestly was really in over my head. I had an art degree, <laughs> but I did, <laughs> I did have very can-do attitudes. So, you know, I get online and search the how, how to learn QuickBooks and there's QuickBooks certified class and I started going to those, but I would sit in these classes and there's someone at the front of the room teaching QuickBooks or QuickBooks online to, you know, the person next to me is a truck driver running a truck driving business. And this person on the other side of me owns a restaurant and they're like all the things to run a restaurant. And then there's over here, someone that has a tea shop or a clothing shop, whatever. And everybody kind of has their own little things that they need from this class. So there's, yes, there's basics that are apply to all of us, but then there's so much in interior design and construction that's, you know, learning how to job cost projects, et cetera. So I would go up to the teacher and ask questions during all the breaks. And then I would hire them for extra, extra time after the classes were over. And I would go to the CPAs that worked with a construction company that I worked for and ask the questions. Um, and, and honestly, I asked a lot of questions that embarrassed myself because I did not go to business school. So little by little, putting little pieces of information together, I just kind of clawed my way through learning it in, in, into some sort of functional way. Well, and it's, you know, I would argue in into a lot more than just a functional way. Like I said, I feel like you truly have mastery over it. And um, the confidence that I know that you derive from being able to come to those decisions, um, whatever it is, whether it's investing in your company and in yourself. I remember the first conversation we had, you know, um, over a year and a few months ago about should, you know, would chairman of board be the right fit for you? And it was interesting is because I don't know if you remember it but I remember we talked probably about 25 minutes or so and I thought that you would be a good fit because if I don't think you're a good fit and I don't think we're going to hit it off or I don't think you need what I know then I'm like I'm not your girl go call Michelle Williams or Nancy Ganskow or Kay Whitaker you know what I'm saying um, but I did think that we would be a good fit and I did think that the things that you needed were within my wheelhouse and I remember you're saying to me I'm decided that I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do two things that I never do anything like this before uh, without doing. I'm going to go into my accounts tonight and just double check my finances and I'm going to sleep on it just because that's how I do things. And I thought, well, that's a smart kid. <laughs> but then like nine o'clock the next morning, there's the text. Where do I wire the money? I'm like, okay. <laughs> But that's the thing, you know, it's like you were able to go and make a quality decision because, and I have to say, other people that have made the decision to either engage me as their chairman of the board or have ultimately decided not to, I don't think there's any one of them that hasn't said I'm going to go review my books with my accountant or my bookkeeper, you know, blah, blah, blah. But you were the only one that was said I'm that you were you you were able to do it yourself without the advice of seeking a bookkeeper or a counselor. So I thought, oh, and that impressed me. And then, of course, it, you know, became part of every single time we would get together. As I said, you were never at a loss. And so I, you know, and this is also, by the way, how Kat came to be invited to teach online accounting 101 
under Luann University. And you can hear it and you'll hear more of it as she talks and understand because it isn't just that I look around and I say, oh, you look like you're a smart lady. Want to do this? It's like, I got to know that you know. And after I guess it was about seven or eight months of working together, I, I remember thinking, because you know what, it, remember what it was? One of my other chairman of the board clients, you know, she's a little bit more like me, that the Achilles heel of the accounting was, you know, not a, a sweet spot, right? And I said, geez, if Kat could just help this one, man, that would like open this other designer's whole world up and, and fill up her confidence and everything else. And then I was like, huh, why help one? Why not help many, right? <laughs> I love that. I love that a lot. I have to tell you one other little part of the story though Luann after I went out uh, on my own um, to become my own little material design interior design company at the very beginning I thought why why spend the $25 a month to have QuickBooks online when I can just do a little spreadsheet in Excel because we all know how much I love Excel yes and so I was doing my bookkeeping for the first couple of years in Excel and even though I knew QuickBooks like the back of my hand I just didn't think that it was worth the money or, or whatever. Like I thought my my books were fairly straightforward. Mm. And um, there's an investor that invests in a lot of the projects that I, I work on these days. And he, he's a little bit of a mentor to me. And I remember we were having a conversation one time and he asked for a report. And I'm like, hang on a second. I give him a, a Excel spreadsheet. And he's kind of like brain exploding emoji. <laughs> like, what on earth is this? What kind of unprofessional nonsense is this? Oh. And I'm like, well, it's accurate. Right. He's like, if you don't take yourself seriously as a business owner, nobody else is going to. Mm. And so that weekend I went and got my own QuickBooks online. And I will tell you that there's many, many times throughout the last five, six years that I've been in business that there are little turning points. And that was definitely a turning point. And I will tell you that my business changed from that moment. Wow. Okay. So tell me why did it change from that moment because of that little, you know, feeling inside of, okay, now I am that official, like he, you know, he, you know, that, that confidence, or was there an actual result in using QuickBooks that it changed? What, what was that about? I think it's twofold. QuickBooks is a double entry accounting method, which means everything that you put in, there's a check and a balance so that there's the reconciliations at the end of the month where you're going to double check that everything is accurate. Um, so that next level of accuracy, the every time, whenever your books are up to date, you know that you can jump in there and see a year to date or this year over last year, there's so many different things that you can start to look at and kind of compare and contrast what's happening now versus what you want to be happening versus what was happening this time last year. And it just gives you that next level management of what's going on in the business. Mm, so good. It's it also so good. is really helpful for, for job costing projects. So if you're estimating a new project and you look at a similar project that you did, no matter when it was this year, last year, whenever, as long as it's in your QuickBooks accurately, you can go back, back and say, okay, on, you know, Jones project, I did not make money. So on Anderson project, I'm going to change this, this, and this, and I'm going to be more profitable this time. I love that. It's like the, when we always talk about doing the autopsy of the project, but there is the actual autopsy of the project in profit and loss for sitting there in QuickBooks. And so to your point, right. you know, you think that you do, you know, your wheelhouse is design builds, which we'll talk about in a moment, but you think you do a design build, whether it's for a client or for a builder, and you think you're profitable, but when you enter everything in at the end of it, maybe you are, maybe you're not, but maybe mm -hmm. you're not at the level that is sustainable sustainable to continue to grow your business. And what you're saying right. is you can look at that and make a decision right then when you're about to do the next proposal for the similar type project. Right. And I, I have heard you say this on the show many times before about doing the autopsy and what is the real, real cost. Like you need that real, real cost at your fingertips at all times mm -hmm. in order to make good business decisions. And honestly, I will tell you that all of this before you you kind of jump into the world sounds like what the heck does that mean but it means look at the the same style project the same scope of project 
that you've done before and see once all the expenses go out, all the trips to FedEx, all the couriers, all the like post, all that stuff that comes in late, because it's easy to say, you know, here's the cost of the art, the accessories, the rugs, the furniture, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to be profitable. But at the end of at the end of the day, once all those expenses go out, did you actually make the kind of money that you want to be making or that is fair market value? Are you making Starbucks wages and working your hiney off? Which right. I was, right. to be perfectly <laughs> honest. Well, and that's what happens when you know your numbers, right? You you look at it and you can't just sort of say to yourself, this is pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. It's like, well, I'm looking at this and it's not pretty good at all, right? Right, 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 right. And um not to, not, this is literally not sponsored. I have no association with QuickBooks at all, except I love the functionality in my business. And so every charge that goes on my credit card, every um, check, business check that I write, not only do I do the accounting of, you know, is this cost of goods sold or whatever, I also mark your market to a project or a client. And so then I can always go in and sort my um, profit and loss by client and see where if I'm not where I want to be, where, where is it that I'm dropping the ball? Mm, I love it. Tell me a little bit about when you did. So you did the um, online, we have to call it online accounting. Because <laughs> Luann doesn't want to be sued. <laughs> right. Um, when you did online accounting 101 for us back in the fall of 2019, which you're going to be doing again in spring of 2020, um, you did 101 and our dear friend Peter Lang, the designer CPA, did 201. When you did the 101, I my understanding was the only thing that I need to know in coming to that class with you, Kat, was how to enter my name into signing up for QuickBooks. Like it was literally from zero out. It was like, let's open your account, la, 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 la. Where with Peters, it was, you should know how to reconcile. You should, it's certain criteria that you should be proficient in using that online accounting software before you sit in his class. Am I, I'm correct about these assumptions. Correct. Right. Correct. right. And I shouldn't say they're assumptions. Yes. I did qualify them very detailed with you guys, but okay. Repeating <laughs> for sake of clarity. So tell me going back and thinking about going through the six weeks of the course what were you what would do you have any recall or recollections of moments where you know from the designers in your class that there was some aha moments or um you know share with us because i want others to be encouraged to own their numbers the way you do because even this other chairman of the board that you know was in your class and you did some private tutoring with her thank you for me from me to doing that and donating that to her you know it it did i i see the difference in her in the last 6 months in our conversations and what she's doing and the decision she makes there's a freedom that comes when you understand this so share some of the things that you felt were like milestones or or learnings that others had so i'll tell you that absolutely the person that's 1 minute in business is welcome and we're going to start from this is how you set up your account in QuickBooks and you know, here's where you put, whether you're an LLC or a sole proprietor, here's where you put your tax ID number, blah, blah, blah. But the most interesting thing to me was there were a lot of mature business owners, mature in that they are established designers practicing at a high level and they're outsourcing their bookkeeping, but they mm. don't fully understand how to um, really give those bookkeepers the right instructions and really ask for the right reports that are going to help them be that master at, at business. They kind of rely on their bookkeepers to do the black magic and then hope that everything, everything is, right. you know, how it should be at the end of the year. And, and maybe it is because keeping your books for tax purposes is one thing, you know, basically for, for tax, you want to know how much you're making. And then the percentage of that goes to, you know, pay for the great services that we enjoy in this country. <laughs> but that's a whole different thing than knowing how much should I charge my next client based on my last client. And so I found it really interesting that there were a lot of really talented, fabulous designers in my class that maybe are next level in their ability to be a boss to their bookkeeper at this point. So I kind of describe it 
very similar to, I have a junior designer that I, I adore and works with me. And when I ask her to do something design related, whether it's elevate a kitchen or, um, I don't know, do a light switch layout. I'm not asking her in the same way that my client is asking for my client is asking for it, relying on me to be the professional and hope that everything is okay. I am asking her knowing that if she wins the lottery and disappears tomorrow from my company, I can go in and do it. And not only right. that, I can, I like kind of next level what she's doing, if that makes sense. Yes. And so I found, and, and one of the goals for the class is these designers that are five years in business and they don't know how to reconcile it, say, or they don't know how to job cost. It's not that you have to do it, but if you know these things, you'll be able to ask for the next level of information from your bookkeeper. If, I love it. If that makes sense. It does make sense. And it's so true. It's so true because we have had story after story of designers through the years that have shared how bookkeepers were abs absolutely maliciously stealing and extorting and, and, and so forth from them. And then just negligent with no oversight by the principal and therefore right. mistakes happen. And all the way, th those are the egregious things. But then we also have the things where, you know, you just are, the bookkeeper is just allotting things to the wrong chart of accounts right. or the wrong clients. And you are the only person really that probably can look at that and notice the um, discrepancy easily, right? 100%. And yeah. yeah. it can be, your, your books can be done correctly for tax purposes and not be done in a way that you can manage your business. Exactly. So it's really taking that next level. And I, at this point in my business and life, I have a wonderful bookkeeper, but I do go into my books at least one full day a month and oftentimes more just to not to not looking over her shoulder, but just making sure that, okay, I look at my P and L by every client. If is there something that doesn't make sense? I jump into that client and see why ha, is that, has there been some miscommunication between her and me, or am I screwing something up on this project? I want to know those things. And so just kind of keeping tab tabs on what's going on in my books. I know for a fact, there's no way. And I want to say hell. <laughs> there's no <laughs> way that my bookkeeper um, is exhorting money or what's that called? There's no way my bookkeeper is doing something malicious or skimming off the top or whatever. There's right. absolutely no way because I have an, a finger on the pulse of my business at all times. Mm -hmm. And so even if you never aspire to do your books and that's totally fine if that's where you are in your business, as a business owner, you have to know what's going on in there. Yes, I, I agree. And I remember that now that you say that, I remember the different designers that took the course and their goal was to be able to properly and confidently be the partner with the bookkeeper and the oversight of the bookkeeper to what's going on as opposed to just blindly trusting that it's happening. Um, right. You know, it's funny because in a, one of my masterminds yesterday, it came up in the conversation how myself and one other one other woman in the mastermind and this is our 3 million dollar plus mastermind have a husband who is the the CFO in our business mm -hmm. and you know we it, there's no getting around the fact that that brings a lot of security you know that 100 percent, right and without that though i don't know how you do it like you have to you have to know what you're doing and talking about it if you're because the we've had the stories you know corey damon jenkins you know peter lang have told us the stories of personally being peter with clients and corey personally being ripped off by people that were longtime employees that they trusted. And, um, you know, opportunity is whatever they say it is, you know, the mother of whatever. A hundred percent. It's, it's, so much like we hire, let's say a plumber and we trust the plumber to know what they're doing and to install our project with the hot water going to the hot and the cold water going to the cold. <laughs> and that's great, but you can't do that with your book, with your right. finances. That is the heartbeat of your, your right. business and your trust, you're like 100% trusting. If you don't have a VIN man and you don't know this stuff, you're 100% just trusting that person yes. with the heartbeat of your business. And if you're the business owner, it, it just comes with the territory and it's really shocking. I mean, they don't teach this in design school, but it's the difference between having a life that you are comfortable in and that you love and feeling like 
literally when is Starbucks hiring? I'm going to apply for it. <laughs> right? It's that it's that feeling like you're in chaos and is it all worth it? Because the totally. the, the truth is is you know, you don't even know that it might be because you don't know how to read right. the reports, right? right. And I also right. just we're going to we're going to close out this segment on this, but I do want to just say the other thing that I love that you it's not about just protecting yourself. It's not about just having the confidence in yourself knowing that you can um, really just make quality decisions, you know, with a reasonable expectation alone without consulting other people, which is never a bad idea. But um, it's also what you said in really being able to understand and track project after project and to do that true analysis of where your time and energy are spent and if it's worth it so that you, I think what it is, is it's one thing working with designers so long now and encouraging them when they're ready and when they have their skills have now matched the point where they should raise their rates. Okay. Because you do have to make those um, skill jumps as well, but for sure. Right. Like I always say, look, a $25 an hour jump you can make just because it's Tuesday morning. Like I know that to be true. Like I just do. I just know it. It's sales. Go ahead. Give yourself a $25 hour raise right now. I don't right. care what hourly rate you are at. <laughs> from 75 to 575 an hour, you can raise 25. But when you want to go from 350 to 575, you got to bring some chops along with it, right? If you want to go from right. 125 to 275, that's a little different um, thing. But the thing is, is that Sometimes when you break it down, I remember Kim or Liddy coming on the show and breaking down what one twenty five an hour actually earns you. And I think it was like twenty nine dollars an hour. It's and, shocking. Yes. It is shocking. Yes. And the thing is, if you have clients that work um, either as managers with hourly people, there's a quick calculation you can do and like, oh, you bill out two sixty five an hour. That's like five hundred thousand dollars a year. That's actually not how it works out when you own your own business. Right. right. <laughs> it's totally different. But it's it's not um, intuitive that you would know that, honestly. Right, right. But when you see it in the black and white and you just look at the end of the P and L, like you said, of every individual project and it doesn't add up, number one what we said, you might find that products or goods or services were allocated to the wrong client. And that's tough for the bookkeeper to always know that. Right. And mm -hmm. so that's why we have to evaluate. But also it's like, if you're just consistently not earning a profit margin that will sustain a business, it's right there. You don't need right. the encouragement from a podcast to raise your rates. You're like, you can see this is not viable. <laughs> right, right, right. right? And it's, it's the standing in your space to quote Sandra Funk. Like once you can look at it in black and white and say, hey, my $75 an hour rate is not cutting it. Exactly. And, and when a client pushes back $75, $75 an hour is $150,000 a year, that's so much money. And you know, you know, because you looked at your books, <laughs> you're not making $150,000 a year at your $75 an hour rate. It just doesn't work like that. It gives you some level of confidence where you don't get all defensive. You know in your head where you need to go and it. Also, I, I'm sure helps in the sales process, even though that's your area of expertise, Lou Ann, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> but when you, when you're like, when someone pushes you back the first time and you're like, oh, that's right. Da, 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 da. Um, it's a whole different conversation than when you know that um, that's not the case. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So this leads me to your other true superpower, which is the design build process. And, um, you know, I would say, I, I mean, it was so funny. I was going to guess at what percentage of your clients are design build, but if I gave you a minute, you could look up your QuickBooks and probably tell me the exact percentage. <laughs> but the, the majority majority of your clients are design build clients, correct? That is correct. Over the course of your entire career from starting back with that builder and really understanding the business from the back end side of the builder, not only the construction process side, but also the uh, management of the finances side. That's the two things you learned with working with that first uh, position. But now you take it into your current, uh, your own business all these years, and it's your, your niche specialty. Not that you don't do um, design and decoration, but the thing is that you have such a great process for the design build. And 
literally listening to your process for QuickBooks, it's so easy to see how you take that same approach over there and everything is on spreadsheets. Everything is figured out. All of the elevations are done. And this, this takes a minute to learn and develop this skill, right, Kat? It's true. It's true. And it takes a lot of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. You know what I always say, an expert in their field is the one who's made all the mistakes in their field. Oh, man, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then of course, we're never expert expert, right? Every day of the week, we're going to make a mistake. And I'm like, all right, there's another one. Yay. Won't make that one. There's again. something else to learn. Right. Something exactly. else you know. <laughs> exactly. So, so the thing is, what's interesting is, is that um, you really do have this so well developed that you are a essentially a solo firm that executes probably 20 to 30 design builds a year, if not more at this point, in addition to all of the design decoration projects. Am I right on the numbers there? Or is it more design builds? No, that's, that's right. That's it. And so, so you have your assistant and you have your bookkeeper, but all of these people are contract people for you. They are, um, um, outside, you know, they're, they're not your full time in staff. You don't, which, and see that part of it, I has always impressed me as well, because to execute 25, 30 ground up design builds a year, plus all the additional projects that you do for your past and repeat clients that come back and want their master bedroom redone and they want their dentist office and their lawyer's office redone and all the things that I know that you also do, it's, it, it takes a high level of internal processes and systems and an attention to detail and to, um, you know, structure in order to execute that pretty much as a solo. That's insanity to me. There's a spreadsheet for that, Luann. <laughs> <laughs> There's a spreadsheet for that. Of course there is, Kat. <laughs> but this is the thing. So tell me about when you think about, well, so so I was going to say when you think about if a designer were to come to you and ask you what's the secret sauce on that. You know, the other thing that we're going to do is we may say here is you're going to now under Luann University also teach uh, Design Build 201. So we've got Jenny Slingerlin who is teaching Design Build 101. And it is amazing. She's yes. Amazing. Yes. I love Jenny too. And the feedback we had, oh my God, more than 30 or 40 designers go through that. And the feedback was outstanding. And so that's Jenny's, Jenny's Design Build 101 is teaching she worded it to me like this cat you are an interior designer you have whatever level of experience you have it could be five years ten years it could be one year but your experience in design build is either one of two you've probably never done a design build before maybe you've done a room renovation where you knock down a wall or two and you have an opportunity or you want to create the opportunities so you want to develop a design build book process or you have possibly executed a number of design builds before, but you've never captured it into a process. And so in order to expand and have different team members execute it your way and execute it in um, a system that delivers it to the builder when he or she needs it, that's your challenge now. And so you just are like, okay, breaks on everything. I'm going to sit down for six weeks and I'm going to actually finally create my own design build. So would you agree with that assessment? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think um, Jenny has a really great course that walks you through the construction process from, you know, Nut, soup to nuts. Mm -hmm. And the reason, you know, I'll share with everyone is that when Jenny and I started talking about doing this course, of course, I adore and love Jenny. And she's come to my Power Talk Friday tours. And she's been a, 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 a major vocal supporter of the show for many years. So we have a nice friendship. We've met each other at Vegas a couple of times, High Point, all the things. But do I really know that she's capable of teaching this course? And so working with Cat so closely and knowing what she does, I ask Cat to sit together with Jenny and go through the course. And, and of course, and then of course, Brad, when I met Brad and Jenny does work with Brad. So Brad Levitt of AFT Construction. And he said, oh, no, 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 no. Jenny's one of the good ones. So I was very comfortable and confident in asking her to do the course. But what's going to happen now is you're going to take it to the 201 level. So this is the way you do your projects at this level. So tell us a little bit about 
about how you execute your design build projects and what are the next level of details and who is it for and why have you decided to do this? So I definitely am systems oriented. I love a spreadsheet. I have an Excel work <laughs> workbook that has um, basically my spec book in it. And I use that as a template for every project that I do. I have done a large volume of construction over the course of my career, as we talked about working for a contractor and then all the way through my life as an entrepreneur. Um, the things that I am focusing on in this course are the things that I wish I knew before I started in business. So every project, there's there are the things that you learn because sometimes because they go wrong and you're paying for them to be redone. And there's so many things in, a, in the construction process where you just don't know until you're up against a situation that's costing someone a lot of money. Mm. And so this person literally could have done Jenny's course in the fall and they're going right into my course. Um, so I'm not going to be as here's how to do your spec book as much as next level. Here are the thing. <laughs> literally, I started my curriculum planning by writing out a list of some of the most expensive mistakes I've made over the course of my mm. career. And Smart. if I can save anyone out there, just one of these, it honestly brings me joy and it will make it worth it. Um, because it, in each discipline, we're going to take one class and talk about each discipline. So we'll have one class where we talk about electrical. We're going to go through think, callbacks I've had from clients, things have happened on job sites and the things that I wish I knew before I was out there offering my services. And when you're out there being a professional, sometimes these things come up and thank the Lord for Google, <laughs> thank the Lord for the um, forum, the Facebook forums, et cetera. But some of this stuff, uh, it, it's really funny. Luann and I have worked together over the last year to improve my window treatment process. And there are things that come up on the window treatment jobs. And I'm like, Luann, where do I learn? <laughs> Where do I learn that, um, you know, a 10 foot wide roller shade is going to fall down, et oh my cetera. God. And she, she said, sometimes you just have to learn by doing it. And so I've been out there doing it in the construction field. And I have a lot, a lot of these things that have gone wrong. And I really just want to share them with the world so that you don't have to make the same mistakes right. or that you don't end up replacing countertops at your expense or whatever it is. I love it. Okay. So, so to understand it better then is, in Jenny's course, you learn the process, the the different steps, and you end up knowing how to create a design build book. But then you're going to go, you can use that same template that you just created for your design build book. And now you're going to say, this whole thing is on plumbing. Here are the things that the builder needs. Here are the big places that the most common mistakes happen. Here are the ways to make a system within the plumbing, uh, the way you spec your plumbing in order to avoid these. Is that what we're talking Correct. about? Those Correct. details. And right? we're going to a little bit nerdy about thing the things that go wrong and the questions that you get asked just it, it'll give you a little bit of confidence mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and when you say you're on your first job and this is your absolute first design build project and when someone comes to you with the question just having that knowledge in your back pocket is going to be a confidence booster and hopefully it helps you avoid costly mistakes. I love it. I love it. So tell us a little bit about the way you do work with your team. Since you've got your junior designer who is not coming and reporting to your office pre-COVID, this was the way your world was set up. I mean, half the time you're in one state and she's in another state. I know this about your firm. It's true. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about, um, give us some insight to your process and the way you work. How do you manage meetings with her? How do you have accountability with her when you do have so much on your plate and you are offloading things to her and it, they need to be done and they need to be done on time and, and, and right. But you're, you're not eight hours a day sitting around and overseeing her. It's true. So um, Emily and I start out each week with a video conference or a phone conference because we both love to travel and we do work remotely quite a bit. Um, we go over the entire project load. So I have a spreadsheet shockingly. <laughs> <laughs> that has listed out every open project and where we are all, all the way from this person called and I'm following up on sales with them all the way through we have a warranty call. Um, and we have another 
<laughs> Excel spreadsheet that has our process. So there's um, the furnishings process if people are doing a furnishings project. There's the design build process if they're in our design build process. And it's literally whatever process we're doing with a client, they're jumping on the bottom of the escalator and going all the way up. So it's just check, 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 check. Um, so we go through at the beginning of the week, each project where we are in the process and then kind of what our goals are for the week. And we go ahead and a lot of time for, you know, what it is that we have coming up to make sure that we meet deadlines and that our clients are well served. Because at the end of the day, we don't have a business if we don't have really happy clients that we're bringing um, a lot of value to. Absolutely. I, the, the way you organize it is just so clear. And so tell me, so nerdy. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we'd, I, I would like, you know, one tenth of your nerdiness, honestly, and I wouldn't call it nerdiness, I would call it superpower organization. But the thing is, are there have you in setting up that first of all, I can hear it. you have a process for everything. So there you go. There's our Sarah Lynn Brennan process leads to profits right there, right? It's like you have broken down all the things that you do. And the why, the reason and the why that we do this is evidenced exactly in what you're saying, because now someone else can duplicate it. And you know that this person can do it the way you want it done, as opposed to the way they do it, which might leave two steps out or might present in a different way that you don't want under your brand and your firm, right? So number one right. is- And the then you also kind of know how long each step of the process mm. takes. So if projects gets, get bunched up, and this does happen, Luann, I'm sure happens in the window treatment business I don't, you and I have never talked about it before but you'll you know very cleverly have this project's going to go this long and then the next project's going to go this long and the next project's going to go this long but then somebody has a delay and then all of a sudden you have three projects in the same step mm. of the process mm -hmm. um, and so then we know we need to pull in outside help because all of a sudden we have three presentations at the same time and so kind of knowing how long each step of the process takes really is helpful and the other thing is you're not starting from scratch whether you're writing, painting, doing interior design, starting without blank pages is really the hardest part. And so the thing about having a little bit of an internal template of this is how I do it in back to my spec book spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I do love a spreadsheet though. I just open that spec book that I used on the last project or that I have as a blank template. And there you go. You already feel like you have a big leg up. So, you know, like today I need to fill out you know, all the accessories and all the plumbing, blah, blah, blah. It's really um, so much easier once you have not only have a recipe, but if you have it, it's like, I, I love to cook in my free time. I don't really do it on weeknights, but let's say on the weekend for fun. So if you have a recipe for something, that's one thing that gives you a little bit of a leg up. But if you go to Whole Foods Market and you buy the already chopped onion and the already, the already mm. he chopped it's that that's what having a template does for you right and, right and your template has got to be your own so whether you I mean heck you can buy my builder pro product and and tweak it to be yours you can take Sandra Funk's process you could take Sarah Lynn Brennan like all of these people are beautiful wonderful resources and honestly I've done a lot of them and then you just kind of take it home and make it your own and then you have your own template ready to go and it's your own like kind of you know pre-chopped onion <laughs> it's that much <laughs> of a leg up to what you're making it's so true that you know it's funny that you mentioned it because as you were describing what you've done in your own firm as far as creating all those templates and those pre-chopped onions it reminded me of Sandra's the, the the interior design standard that she's built out and you've taken that you've oh, purchased that and you've done Sandra that it's amazing I have <laughs> the highest respect for Sandra, Sandra Funk and what she's done. And honestly, if you're a baby designer, go take that class immediately. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's interesting that I know is you did not develop your systems and processes after taking her class, you listening to Kat, hear how organized she is. She had all of this down. And this is where we will say you probably, you know, really do own that moniker a little nerdy because your world is all about I know that I have a system and process. Is there another one out there that's a little better or I can blend into mine to make mine better, right? I mean, you had your processes. This you're not you didn't hatch out a year ago when you took this course. You had them established. I'm great right about that, Correct. right? Correct. But yeah. she's been in business so much longer than Yes. 
yeah. than I have. There was a finesse to her process that I, I up-leveled my process from taking Sandra's class. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I love it. Well, this is the thing, you know, I mean, whether you listen to the podcast, if that's where you're at in your business and you don't have the funds yet to invest in your personal or your business development, then listening to the podcast is that entry level. It's hearing 100%. how, right? It's hearing how 100%. somebody else with more experience does something. But, you know, here we go. We've got you who's in business. How many years now? Five. Five. I, Jesus, I was going to say 10. You're just so experienced. It's crazy. It's the gray hair. <laughs> no, it's the level of experience and confidence it is. But I mean, five years, all of it, always organized. And I shouldn't say always. I know you had a growing period. There's no question we all do. But organize and systemize and processes. And you still invest in the interior design standard and you learn something from it. And that is the key, is to always keep looking to see and you don't have to adopt it to your own word for word if you have no process in place then maybe you do adopt the interior design standard and you just click you know you know duplicate in asana and off to the races but for someone like yourself with such depth and experience in developing our own processes and systems to consistently always reach out for a better way and to just compare it to what you're doing and take what's better and leave what's the same or not is amazing i i mean that this is why i love working with you you know can i speak to a, a moment in time that i know we always are touching back in as designers and i see it on the Facebook forums, whatever. And that is when I first became an entrepreneur and, you know, left an architecture firm and became material design into your design company. I will tell you there were two years that were awful, mm. really, really, really awful. They don't teach you in design school how to run a business. And I personally, I don't know if I'm an extra clueless person, but I didn't realize <laughs> <laughs> how much of a different thing, different animal it is to run your own business than to do, to be a really talented and polished interior designer. And it's soul crushing. It's really, really soul crushing to know that you're overqualified, to know that you're a good designer and to know that you're literally making less than minimum wage and working so, so, so hard. And I felt, I don't know if it was true, if it was just something I was projecting into the world. I felt when I first went out on my own really alone. Like no one really wanted to share what they were charging, how to charge, how to break a project down. And I think I started listening to you, Luann, maybe on episode three. Mm. Like that would have been Sandra's episode, I think. <laughs> I think it was, honestly. And I drive a lot between job sites, et cetera. And listening to your podcast was honestly a beacon in that dark literally dark hole mm. of knowing that I loved interior design, knowing that making beautiful things is what I was put on this planet to do, but also not understanding why I was working for really wonderful clients that probably I know they don't. Cause I've, I've had conversations. I had no idea that I was, you know, making starvation wages. Mm. <laughs> they didn't, it's not their, it's not on them to make sure that I'm running a profitable business. That's on me. They're going to assume that you are right. And so like feeling this just like vortex of suck because my clients thought I was making good money. Everybody thinks that you're living the street, like your friends think that you like run around picking out pillows and paint colors and just working so hard and feeling like I can't get ahead. And not only that, I don't understand how to get ahead. Hmm. And so listening to the podcast, um, connecting with other designers on on the socials, et cetera, hearing other designers stand in their space and talk about um, <clears throat> how, to, how to deal with clients, how to deal with issues that came up. And honestly, hearing you say develop your process, it, it wasn't something I came out of the womb knowing how to do, honestly. Oh. <laughs> it, just, it just started like little by little and the things that I could get into an Excel spreadsheet all of a sudden weren't a pain point. And so that's where I was. I did come out of the womb a nerd. <laughs> I love to learn. I love it, love it, love it. Um, I love someone telling me what to do. And so I think that's why I like to have my Excel spreadsheets because they tell me what to do because I am not naturally a very organized person. So I really love the structure. And so like finding like, oh, I, um, you know, codified in an Excel spreadsheet, how to do the paint selection process. Oh, all of a sudden that's, that process is less painful. And so slowly like building it up and 
finding like more and more ease and more and more confidence and then kind of like stepping into that space of my life is good. Hmm. You know, it's funny because, um, I, that one little bit in there that you said, like starting with whatever, whatever it is, but capturing the process for paint selection. And we're obviously talking about for an entire house, not like walking into a room and picking a paint out of a (laughs) fan deck. Right. Um, but that reminds me of that journey of doing that is the thing that I think it's, it's the thing that clogs entrepreneurs up they will look at how overwhelming it is all of the places that need a process and feel like it's such an onerous thing to do and so therefore it just keeps getting kicked to the curb it goes week by month by year and the next thing you know you're 10 12 15 20 years in business and you know, you, 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 maybe you're making money, maybe you're not, maybe you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, maybe you're money launder. Like I say, you know, none of it stays in your bank account. Right. But you know, you're mostly doing nice projects and people respect you and you have a good amount of um, healthy respect for your abilities, but it's that other part. And the thing about it is, is when you said just, okay, capture how I do the paint process. I remember that was the journey with Sarah Brennan and, you know, coaching her through her first, you know, two years in business. And it took saying it to her more than a few times. No, 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 no. Break it all the way down. So Mm -hmm. this is the reveal process. What is the part that happens in your office? What is the part? I said to her, I said, so are you going to get accessories at other stores that the client it hasn't purchased. Well, yes. I'm like, is that in the process or is the process just say put accessories in the home? Right. So it's like, where do they come from? Do they just drop into the driveway? Like, so is it one week before that you take a trip to the store? Is it the day before? Is it, do you make a spreadsheet of what you've put? Do you have the price? And it was like, I remember her saying, whoa, whoa, you know, but she did what it sounds like you did, which is just, I'm going to do, I'm going to do my paint process now. Why don't I just put it in a spreadsheet and capture how I do it? And now that's done. Right. And then I'm going to go back to the rest of my whole day. This isn't like six weeks out of my life, creating a process every day, every minute. It's just do it when you do it and perfect it and, and, and tune it and it's done. And then it, you know, at window works this past year, you know, in 2020, it was the goal to get our operations manual revamped because we had one and it's two and a half inches thick, but it's from 1978. <laughs> like, right, right. It doesn't use the word fax machine, let alone computer, email, <laughs> or cell phone. <laughs> fax machine. That's not even in there. There were fax machines then. <laughs> well, you still don't need that word because now we're past Right? I mean, that was the thing. Like we sat there, Vinnie, Billy, and myself, and we're like, this thing is so old that faxes came in and out. <laughs> I'll tell you also that when people are like, make a process, make a process, you're like, whatever. One person calls me, they want a new bathroom. The next person calls me, they're a builder, they need the whole house. The next person calls me, they want furniture. How can I have a process for this? Mm. And being the nerd that I am, this, the, the process of my Excel spreadsheet having my specs in it was really kind of an accidental slash necessity thing. Um, I just started with an office that I was doing years ago and I'm like, okay, here are all the items that I need. Here's the prices. Here's the links. Here's the da, 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 da. And then the next person calls me for a bathroom and I say, all right, let's take that office spreadsheet, copy it, get rid of what you don't need and use the same thing. And then I kept copying that spreadsheet over and over again. And it just kind of took on a life of its own. And mm. now I have the spreadsheet for the furnishing, the spreadsheet for commercial office, the spreadsheet for a new build. And I have a collection of spreadsheets to start with. <laughs> right. Because even like an office and a bathroom, flooring, lighting, certain right. things are the same. That's so interesting. That's a good way to do it. I love when we can see the process on how you do it and how uh, something is created. And so- I'm such a visceral person that a lot of times I love listening listening to your podcast. It literally has revolutionized my business, but I will tell you in the beginning, a lot of times when people are saying these things, you're like, what the heck does that mean? And how does, how, how can that apply to my personal mm-hmm. hell that I have here, over here going on? And so, yeah, if, if someone is out there thinking to themselves, how can I have a process? Every project I do is different. Literally just start with a checklist. Mm-hmm. And then the next project, 
copy and paste a checklist and delete everything that you aren't using because this project is different. And then maybe you're going to find that you have a checklist for the different kinds of projects that you tend to do at right. the end of the day. But I it love takes it. time. It also takes time. It doesn't come out. It doesn't come out of the womb with you. No, but the thing about the time that it takes is that you're going to do those 10 projects over the next year that are all completely different from each other. If that's the case, whether you take the time to copy and paste the checklist or not, right? right? So that one little step and the things that overlap and are still there, great. And then now, like you said, you're left with the checklist for that specific type of a room. And, you know, what I was talking about with the window works thing is I, I literally just in 2020 uh, just put aside two hours every Monday. That was it. It was like, and I'm going to do it today. And there, I've said this before. There were days where I was like, I do not want to do this today. I do not want to do this. And I would say, well, Luann, so then just do the process on how do we close the showroom for a holiday? Because mm -hmm. that's like five steps. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Put the answer machine on, change the message, put the away message on the email. But it was like, and usually when I would do that and I would say, all right, so you don't feel like doing this today. So just do the process for closing the showroom. And then mm -hmm. of course it would take all of 12 minutes to do that. And I'd say, all right, so now do the process for closing on snow days because we have, you know, 12 employees. There's a process for that. It's not a big, long, complicated process, but you know how it became a process? Because back in the day, I would have employees at window works at nine o'clock in the morning. And I'm about to text them to say, or call them before, you know, to cell phones to say, don't go to work. We're going to open late. And now I got people that have, you know, d you know, put themselves in jeopardy driving to work. So it's like, oh, so here's the process for when we have a snow day. You do not move your car until you get a text from Luann that says stay or go. <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> you know, it's like, and who calls the cu customers that have to be rescheduled? Who calls the salespeople that have to blah, blah, blah. So I would do easy things. And sometimes just the process of moving and doing one easy thing, I would, you know, knock off three or four easy things. It's sort of like when you go to exercise. It's like, right. I don't feel like running today. And I would always play games with myself. Well, I mean, I, I did six miles yesterday. I don't, I'm not running today. Well, you know, just do the two mile loop. If I can just get out the door, yeah, you I'll just, do one block. Yeah, and then exactly. when you're out there, you're like, whatever, I'm exactly. cold. Exactly. It's like you get to the one mile and you're like, all right, do the four mile loop. You know what I mean? Like, it's right. like that. So anyway, that's my advice for when you don't want to do something that you have consciously put the time aside to do is to do a part of it. And usually you will end up doing what you're supposed to do. So, all right. And then you did mention, I, we have to make sure we talk about your um, builder, what how you call it? Builder design kit. What do you call it? Design kit for builders. Design <laughs> kit for builders. Okay. So your design kit for builders was one of the little projects that developed out of our uh, chairman of the board, right? It was like, it's huh, true. Right? And it's so true. It's, it's, true. it's literally designed for that entry level spec builder, right? But it kind of could be used by interior designers as well. Tell us a little bit about that. Right. So... The design kit for builders is a product specifically targeted to the spec builder that's, you know, pumping out projects or maybe their first time and they just need that level of organization. It's the number one thing I found through every builder that I work with is um, anytime that I can add organization to their process, it's really a big value add. And so maybe the builder that's targeted doesn't have the on-staff designer or they live in an area that there's not someone that does a really good design build process and so it's it's my excel spreadsheet <laughs> <laughs> it's a, an excel workbook that has a page of electrical selections a page of plumbing selections a page of mirror selections of doorknobs of um, cabinet hardware tile countertops paint and the pack, I have two different collections right now, and they're basically, I know that these fixtures work together. Um, a, a lot of small town builders that I 
I have worked with or met over the years are, you know, relying on the salespeople at Ferguson, which are amazing and helpful, but they'll pick out, let's say the plumbing and light fixtures, and then they'll go to a tile showroom and the tile showroom salesperson will help them with tile selections. But somehow the tile salesperson and the Ferguson salesperson are not collaborating. And so they're, so the builder is left with a product that's not really cohesive and well thought out. So my goal is to help the builders have like a collection of things that are cohesive and well thought out. But if you're wanting a copy of one of my checklists, <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely fully support you buying that um, product and using it as your own checklist and tweak it and make it your own and reach out to me and tell me how I can help you. I honestly would love to be of service to the industry in any way that I can. Mm, yeah, I know that to be true of you. So I just want to recap what this um, builder design kit for builders is. So when you first, when we first started, you know, you came to me and said, what do you think about this idea? And we were work, you know, kicking it through. And if it was a, was it a viable product, who would need it? What I remember the thing for me was when you described how often that entry, I don't know, it's not entry level builder because some builders stay at this level their entire career, but it's that spec builder, right? It's the entry level build project, I guess we should call it. I don't know how you would call it, but the builder that is not, like you said, not working with the whole full blown team. And often it's him and or his wife, or it's the she right. builder and her, you know, right. husband or whatever. And there, like when you go to get this spec build home, the tile is there, the lighting is there, all the things are there. And if you are a lay person and you don't have any design education or aesthetic and you're not even a design enthusiast, you may or may not notice that the house hasn't been cohesively selected. But as right. soon as you get to that next level of awareness, even as a design enthusiast and with the way the internet has made so much uh, with design so much more available to all of us, it is that recognizing that why is all the lighting and the fans very traditional, but all of the hardware and the, you know, other, you know, the selections are, are modern or contemporary. Right, or, or the right? metal colors are not the same and yet it's not a beautiful cohesive mixed metal look. <laughs> right, right. They're not, not the same, but they're not like coordinating with each other right. either. Right. Basically what it is, is the, when he picked them all out, they all said brass, but he didn't know well, one was bright brass. One was shiny brass. Right, one was right. antique brass. He figured <laughs> brass is brass, right? <laughs> it's like Vinny, when he gets Get stressed. He's like, it's blue. I'm like, okay, that's, that's Navy. That's Royal. That's cobalt. Like it's blue. He looks at me and says, I'm like, you're so cute. So anyway, so it's that sort of a thing. And for that builder that doesn't have the budget, they can purchase your um, kit and there's all the links and all the things. And they can, you know, within two different styles, put together a spec home. And the thing is, what's so funny is it's when we talked about it, it was it, it like the builders that you work with it's not this is not their product they this is that what's available retail it's almost like e-design right, right? it's almost right, like right, where right. a luxury designer would also offer an e-design service and um and so I think that, and, and, and it's a great product and the builders are loving it, which is the proof of the pudding. But we realized today when we were talking before air that it actually could serve an interior designer as well, right? It's just having right. all the legwork done. Not that any designer listening isn't capable of putting together the product, the, the actual end up of all the finishes at the level that you have. It's just, they don't have to, right? hundred percent, a hundred percent. It's the same thing as um, me loving Sandra Funk's design standard. Interior design, design standard, standard. Yeah. right. Like I already have a process, but I loved jumping in and seeing hers and I pulled some things out of it and hundred percent was it absolutely worth every penny. And so it honestly, if I could rewind time and go back to the beginning of my career and buy this product, I would, even though I know that every person listening is hundred percent capable of making it on the, of creating a checklist on your own. Why not jump to the front of the line? Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's that, 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 that having, you know, it's what we say for everything. You're going to spend your time or your money for something, whatever it is. You're going to spend your time doing you, it or your money buying it. <laughs> if you want to know the next level of secret, just like I was saying earlier, take this spreadsheet. If you are doing design build for construction, there you have all of your kind of parts and pieces for a new build. But if you want to copy it and paste the format and start your furnishings process, 
it's how I started my furnishings process. Yeah. Yeah. I love <laughs> so, it. Like, like literally take it. It's not going to be the same parts and pieces, but you'll have like all of your columns and kind of a method of of doing it if that makes sense I love it I think it's awesome well I have to tell you I you know of course I could talk to you all day and I love doing that and our and our 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 all day long chairman of the board things (laughs) we have to like at 2 30 go should we eat (laughs) and usually we don't (laughs) (laughs) exactly oh but thank you so much I I my big goal for today's show was to a share with all of our colleagues you know just the skill set that you have that you bring to your business and how they've impacted your business in such a positive way. And then to also share with everybody how you are, as you said, bringing those skill sets and sharing them and teaching them so that you are really, like you said, helping your colleagues jump to the front of the line. So Kat, thanks so much for being on the show today and for being so generous with your knowledge. Thank you so much for having me, Luann. So I absolutely love that Kat described how she went from in over her head to having full confidence in her dual skills, both as a bookkeeper and as a designer, right? But you heard her. This didn't happen overnight. Kat put through a lot of hours and a lot of self-directed education, lots of costly mistakes, and downright panic at how much profit she wasn't making, right? But what I love about Kat is that she always goes back for more. The boss who asks you to do something and you have no idea how to do it, well, Kat goes to figure it out. She takes a class. She takes another class. And then she bugs the teacher with questions to make sure she understands, right? This is the way to do things, all right? The idea is that she never allowed her lack of knowledge or experience to stop her in her tracks. She pushed through the hard stuff and look at where she is today. I am so proud of her. Her business is amazing. The design business is doing so well. 20 to 30 design build projects a year. Developing curriculum for Lou University, teaching those classes at Lou University, and even creating the design kit for builders. I think Kat serves as a really terrific example of our hashtag rising designers so that you understand you can bloom where you're planted. You can push yourself to grow and succeed no matter where you are in your career and where you are right now, right? Remember how Kat started. There really wasn't that much design work to be had, so it was up to her to learn to provide value to the builders through the bookkeeping that she was doing for them, right? And so, um, or like she said, joining her friends serving lattes to the Sam, uh, the 5 a.m. drive through crowd. Like, she didn't want to do that, right? So she figured out a way to be valuable where she was. And of course, she learned a lot so much in that process, all right? And then the other thing is that when she took the leap and started her own design business, Kat told us the first two years were soul crushing. Then she found this podcast. She found you, the community of designers who are willing to share their struggles and to share their advice. And I have to just say thank you to every single guest that has come on here and helped designers like Kat. All right. Because this is how we do it. We do it together. And that's what I love about it. When I hear the stories from you out there that say, I listened, I learned, I listened, I learned. That's the thing. So I encourage you to come over to Luann I Garin Friends Facebook group because a lot more happens over there. And of course, at the Instagram account too, with a lot of community and all things happening there. Um, you guys mean so much to me, but you hear how much you mean to each other. And that's what I love. All right. I just want to take a moment here to thank the show sponsor, Revel Woods. Revel Woods is one of those vendors that you'll be happy that you set the time up to take and uh, set up an account with them, right? They get you. They get interior designers. And that's what makes it so refreshing to work with them. And I want to tell you, if you want to learn how to specialize and specify hardwood flooring for your projects, this is where to go. They have a huge selection and they are dedicated to helping you become an expert on wood floors. So go to revelwoods.com to learn more about how you can partner with Revel Woods so that you can 
give your clients beautiful flooring and you can add the profit to your design business. All right. Um, I also want to encourage you to check out Kat's design kit for builders. Of course, it is built for builders, but I guess the reality is there's no reason you couldn't use it for yourself for those projects where you need to leverage your time, leverage your profit by reducing the time that you have in a project. So check it out. Head over to Design Kit for builders.com. And I also just want to mention that Kat is designing her own furniture line. And I would love for you to follow Kat on social media and also to check out her website so that you can follow along with the progress as she brings this furniture line out to the world. We do expect it to be unveiled, unveiled this spring. And oh my goodness, universe willing, if we are all able to be at High Point this summer in June, then you will be able to see the line at High Point. So look in the show notes for all of the links to get to Kat's social and to her website so that you can be on Anna because I'm going to be there for the launch. That is 100% sure you take that to the bank, okay? As long as we're going to High Point, I'll be there with Kat to support her in that. So thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you, Kat, so much for coming on to the show. I love your guts, lady. You are a hashtag smart lady. And i um, really grateful to be working with you and grateful that you share all of your knowledge, learning experience with our friends here on the podcast, but also through Lou University. All right, you guys, thanks so much for joining today. Decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.